Welcome to a very, 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 very special episode of the Movement, Strength and Play podcast. By the scorecast, it's Timbo, what is better than a 100 podcast? <laughs> 180? It's, that's a, it's that's not, a, yeah, that's a good number of darts. 180, I was going to say 101. No, 200. More is better. <laughs> now, obviously, quality is important as well. Two, it is the 200th, the uh, double century or uh, quattro, as the Italians would say. Um, no, deuce. No, due? Doppio. Quattro, That's is that one. not a four? Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> testing you, just checking you on, on your toes, and you've been doing your uh, uh, linguistic homework. Do it, Duolingo. Uh, two, two, 200 episodes, and today, in this episode, I'm going to hit you with some uh, facts and figures, but we're going to um, look back on some of the best guests and best advice that we think we have managed to take on board from these incredible guests to hopefully give our listeners a reminder. And some of you might not have only just started recently listening, so you might not have known who our first ever guest was and what are some of the biggest takeaway messages from the podcast to help you with your training life and health and wellness. Oh, this will serve as a good recommendations list as well, won't it? For the, for the ones to go back and, and pick out. Are we doing worst guests? <laughs> we haven't had any. Oh, okay. That's well, not what you said to me before we came on live. We, <laughs> we've been we've been guests each on the podcast, so we'll say those. Oh, that was my best ones. <laughs> right, should we get into it? Otherwise, we're going to end up crashing this intro, and we'll just kind of roll into a, a conversation about best guests before we've actually rolled a jingle. Yes, no, of course. And to to celebrate the two hundredth uh, episode, remember we have the uh, the strength and play bundle special for october check out the details for that in the link below you get uh, all of the programs and tutorials for improving your training and your conditioning through movement strength and play with that special offer for october there's a lot of fun to be had in that training program lots yeah, of things to learn lots of fun to be had probably loads of stuff you've never done before that in itself should be a reason just to go and check it out perfect i got to the point then i didn't want to waffle i just said check no. it out that's cool to actually in. go and find yep. out what it's about uh, right, so we're going to have a little bit of a, I don't know what we're going to do, I don't know what this is going to be. It's going to be a relaxed conversation, looking back in some history and hopefully some remembering some fond times and conversations with interesting people. So sit back and enjoy us doing that. Roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So, I want to kick things off with a few... We, we, everyone loves a little stat, don't they? I do. Um, exactly. I want to uh, kick things off with a little bit of a quiz slash thing for you, Ooh. where we're going to say, how many... Um, to the nearest million now. How many? Because I'll give you. A, I'll give you a guess. One. It, it is. It is less. It is less than a million. But how many? Uh, according to the statistics that I have in front of me, how many uh, downloads slash listens of the Movement, Strength, and Play podcast, combined with when it was previously called the Scorecard Science podcast, has there been to date? Now. I have got zero context for this because I don't look at the stats for the podcast. Um, so I'm going to say and this could be embarrassing, 623,429. Oh, very specific. Mm. Um, in front of me, I haven't got it as, as detailed. I've got 755,000. I wanted to go 750, but I thought I'd play it conservative, so I didn't look yeah. like yeah. I'd over-egged it and that we thought I was better than we actually are. That's good then. <laughs> with that. so, some people go, like, oh, is that it? Um, anyway, let's let's push on hard to a million. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? Yes. Um, the other part of the quiz, and I thought this fascinated me when I saw it. Um, now, for the first X number of episodes, there mm. were no guests. There was just uh, me and thee. And yes. a lot of Q&A style questions. And it wasn't until which number episode did we have our first guest? Ooh, good one. Um that's good. And then you asked me who that quiz. guest was. I'm, uh, I'm going to say we probably maybe did ooh. 18. Uh, good, good guess. And you know what? I feel, I wish I, I like being quiz master, but I also would like to, I can't answer this question because I know the answer. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'd have liked to have guessed because anyway, 
15. Because I just, 15. Uh, yeah, it was, I was, it was, I, I was surprised. We did nine. Oh, wow. Did we? Before yeah. we had so a guest on. On our 10th, we had our first guest. Now, uh, for a little bonus, bonus question, Timbo, on our ninth episode, can you remember what it was? I think I can remember who the guest was. Oh, no, the 10th episode was the guest. Oh, right, Do you remember what the episode. ninth episode, the last one that was me and thee? Crikey. I'll give you a clue. <laughs> we recorded it outside the coffee shop at Blend on the seats. Uh, in the we picture, t- you're wearing a vest. Right, we in that episode, I think I might well have talked about skill acquisition and motor control, potentially. Uh, you talk about that on most of them, so That's probably. True. And <laughs> it it was pr- programming and nutrition, only so, because it probably we don't really normally talk about nutrition. Yeah, it's right. interesting. Anyway, so who, you reckon you know who? I definitely didn't know this, that our first guest was... A man called Kenny, who'd written a book. Uh, no. <sighs> Can I try no. again? Yeah. You, I don't think you'll get it because it's a real, it's a bit of, it's a bit unfair in that like we had that and then we had a few without any guests and then like guests started coming in. Uh, no, I don't know them. Uh, oh, we did have Seth on. Right. Was, I was going to outside the scorecast next. Mr. Ross. Edgley. Edgley. Ah, that was an in-face-to-face one, wasn't it? Must have been yeah. cracky. Was our first yeah. guest. Well, we've fallen a long way since then, haven't we? We recorded. <laughs> we recorded that in your in your front room, yes. and you go. You look back and you go, crikey! If that's what we started with, <laughs> but, and uh, potentially our best guest. There you go. We, we, we're all yeah. in and out. Um, Jack, so, I, but, can I just can I stop you a second? I yeah. having, having told you to get closer to the mic before we started. I am now oh, going to ask I'm you to get a little bit. You're getting very sorry. excited. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Sorry. I enjoy it. I like the preaching, but I can't communicate that to you we haven't got a producer who can speak in your ear can we I have to actually pause, <laughs> we get, pause proceedings uh we can cut that bit out go on um yeah we had uh ross edgley athlete adventurer mm. uh, and it was just before he set off on his big swim around great britain um so with that being said um who would you because he's one of mine and i'll say why in a second but i thought you could go with um Looking back at some of the guests, who would you like to give a bit of a mention to as a one to go back and listen to for people if they either haven't or even if it's like, oh, yeah, that was a good one. There was a lot in there and I probably forgot some of that stuff. Go back and check it out. Have you got any? Well, you know, when you're recording things regularly, as we do, uh, you do sort of lose a little bit of track of who we, have you spoken to. So I have to think back to the names and I'm going to kind of just wrap this up in a little bit of just wider context because that's how, what I do. But... Um, what I've enjoyed is particularly training conversations, I think, for me. So I like it when people come on and talk training. Yeah. And I like it when you start to kind of listen to the series of those and you realize that everyone's saying the same stuff. It's just mm. a, it's just the application or the environment or the task or the skill or whatever it is that we're talking about differs. So we got Mark Smelly Bell on a while mm-hmm. back, like who knows a lot about lifting heavy weights. And I don't think he really knew a lot about calisthenics because he was sort of like, well, well I can do push-ups. What else do you do? Like he didn't, he'd, he'd not really kind of ventured into it, but we kind of did have a really good conversation about training variables mm. and just, it all comes down to the same thing. So whether you're in powerlifting, um, bodybuilding or calisthenics, the principles that we use to create adaptation and therefore reach our goals are all the same. Um, and yeah, that was, that was just an interesting conversation because it was, I, I remember saying to you before we started that one, this could go two ways. He might be like amazing <laughs> yeah. or just be like, you guys need to get in the gym and lift some weights. But he wasn't. <laughs> he was very open to bodyweight training. He was actually using it a little bit. And I think that might have been quite early days towards the start of lockdown um, yeah. because he was all of a sudden now at home and we were, we were chatting about what can you do? Um, but yeah, hopefully, I don't know whether he's done any calisthenics since, but he's certainly done very little before because his calisthenics knowledge was squats and, and, and push-ups and just try and do as many bodyweight squats as you can do but i enjoyed yeah. that one and then the, the other ones that i've that particularly spring to mind are my best mate uh, mike fitch um he's actually yes. not answer, he's not answering my calls much anymore me, but, <laughs> um and also ryan from gmb and and largely uh, the reason i like those is and mark probably falls into this category as well is um, now I can't remember the quote so i won't say it but it's something about like beware of a white of, a, of an old man in an, in an industry or something, but like basically saying people who have been around the block a few times generally 
are going to bring a fair amount of wisdom to the table because we've kind of we've we've gone past the kind of oh this is all shiny glittery sort of stuff and this is where i kind of feel like i am at now with my training so i've kind of gone through this process of seeing lots of calisthenic stuff lots of different kind of expressions of it and that was the conversation with mike and, and ryan was at it was like yeah no you can do that stuff if you want but like let's not hold our identity within it and let's do some other stuff as well. And yeah, it's yeah. cool. But uh, we also can train other ways. Um, it was just a very honest, like just, uh, I don't say simple in like a negative way, but it was just quite, I felt quite pure conversation about just four older people in the industry, looking back at it and going, this is, yeah, this is kind of what I see. We haven't had in a few years and put quite a bit of skin in the game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's similar with, um, I've got to mention uh, my man crush, Carl Paoli, when we had... Uh, I knew we wouldn't get away with that. And I, was, I, didn't, I purposely didn't choose Carl because I knew so you, you would. could have it, yeah. But it falls into that same category of like, oh, it was really interesting where the conversation went. And it's this more sort of like when you're talking with someone else and we've not been in that sphere compared to, you know, Ryan uh, and Mike Fitch and, and, and Carl have probably been in that sort of like that space and, and doing the whole online thing and movement and everything for what 10 plus years or whatever whereas you know we'd been playing rugby and doing strength and conditioning mm. coaching and you know in a, in a different like sphere and interestingly how they all that similarity of like looking at like how they've all sort of that overall approach and look at it of being like i don't know softened around the edges if you know what i mean they all uh, everyone would say something about like you know haters on social media they all said something to do with that um and it's just it, that, that type of thing was just interesting to hear you know some of the like nicest people that you see and you meet and put out tremendous content like still get people mm. like hating on them and criticizing them or whatever and, and that they all that idea of having appreciation of like um probably to use i'll butcher it but it's, uh, it's sort of like one of carl's sort of phrases of um appreciating all forms of of training and movement and not thinking your way is right and someone else's way is wrong or that there is this black and white um and i think that that was um from a from a wider perspective um yeah good to good to hear and i'm sure uh, you'll agree that some of the some of these guests that we've had on has shaped our own thinking around training and what's sort of important out of it for people who want to look uh mark smelly bells episode 126 um i'm just trying to find these for you so you can uh um or you go and i'll just find those other ones that you mentioned um yeah i think that's like that's probably one thing that's in terms of reflecting and obviously we, the opportunity that we that comes with the podcast is to speak to the people and get people's perspective and ask them basically the questions that are on our mind um hoping that that's also then going to serve the the audience and i think it is an interesting um like what what's the like what's the outcome for us on the podcast and i know you're quite keen to sort of you speak to somebody and then go and try some stuff like we, we had um knees ever toe guy ben patrick on and now you do some backwards running and, and you'll kind of go and play around with with some of this uh some backwards running learn. very good for my knees when my knees are sore mm. um and I, I think that's the um yeah i think that's probably just having done 200 episodes and, and talked through quite a lot of things with a lot of people there's also i just it, it highlights to me is like we often get sort of people frustrated with this because when they ask a question we say well it depends and i think you kind of what, what i'm sort of We've, we've interviewed some quite niche people um, mm. over the years. And what you realize is that I think there's, there's something to be taken from all of it. But happiness, for me, probably relies in some of it. I think we can, one thing that I think is I look back and we've had people on and go, if you try and do all this stuff, you're going to drive yourself crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's impossible, depending on how busy the rest of your life is like in... Um, and what other stuff you kind of got going on how much time you have for it but you could listen to this and you go, i'm going to implement that i'm going to implement that and all of a sudden you're overwhelmed by implementing all of this stuff and the reality of that for me is it's impossible and you will actually be unhappy by trying to chase that you've got to kind of listen to it and find your expression and rhythm of all of these things how does this stuff fit into your training what training do you like to do what can you learn from mark bell which is mm. um is going to be useful for your training what can you learn from sally bell our, our functional yes. um, health or doctor 
um what what what's, what elements of that and then within that even kind of her four or five pillars like which one of those are you really going to start to focus on and yeah. We've had sleep people on, nutrition people on. We've had like all all this sorts of stuff, and I, I just think there's there's something to be taken from from all of it. Yeah, but there also needs to be things which we have to kind of go. That's just not for now. Timbo, I think that's one of the best bits of advice you've ever given. Yeah. And I think that there there is. I mean that, and that is um, because we get like it's so easy to get information overload. Um, now, a, a good example for this would be, and I can say this because she doesn't listen to the podcast. Mrs. Jacko, right? If you are in the vicinity of her and she's doing something, chances are there's a podcast on. And it's like she is gaining information. Or, and at times I'm just like, can we just have some quiet? <laughs> <laughs> this information. Goes, but like, and, and the, but you can have information overload with the podcast. You could listen. You might be an avid listener. You listen to every single one. It's like you are in your warm-ups for your training. You're juggling whilst doing some eye movements, whilst holding your breath, whilst running backwards, whilst doing this, and then da 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 da. And it's like just just too much stuff for the the body mm. to do, and your brain's handling and all that, as you say. But what I think is 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 really great about the podcast, and if we can take this sort of approach of going, I'm going to listen to this information and be educated or enlightened by it and then choose as to whether I'm actually going to necessarily implement. So me knowing about something, like um, when we had um, Glenn from the from the National mm. Circus on and some of the things around like juggling and coordination and all that sort of good stuff um, and vestibular system and all this is like, do I... I have a I have an appreciation for that. Do I currently juggle in my in in my day to day and in some of my training and stuff? No, I don't. But I understand how it could fit in, and if I wanted to do something like that, then I might implement some of it or whatever. But it doesn't mean I have to do all of it. But having an awareness of these different areas, that's probably been the most enlightening thing for me um, about the podcast. And one of the things that we've um, we've both enjoyed that is is just having this like um, array. Plethora, to use one of your favourite words. Plethora. Plethora. <laughs> oh, plethora. That's, like that. That's what the Italians would call it. Mm. Um, of, of guess, like such wide ranging. It's like it's massively expanded my own, and I hope it has done for the listeners as well, our own sort of just appreciation of like what type of information is out there. Um, do you, I find that like the, the world, and this is probably driven by social media largely, has become... Very, or let's okay let me start that again not the world social media has become very niche like yeah. you and i are in this as well so we have calisthenics right and then yeah. you've also got your breathing stuff and, and that's now a big focus of your attention and what people are starting to know you for as somebody who's a breath coach i'm doing more in shoulders now so people are starting to know me as a shoulder guy and then we get the the lymph guy perry on from stop chasing yeah. pain and then we Class. get Shout out. um somebody around toxicity and then we get somebody like all of this stuff so we now have these things and then we actually create a little echo chamber when we do the podcast because we bring them in and then we um we talk to them about their area of expertise and specialism which is yeah. their world because that's kind of the message that they're portraying um i think that is is good but for most people we actually want to be better generalists like we're yeah. not that person who's pushing that message. So for me, like I take my own situation, I'm kind of putting quite a bit of shoulder content out at the moment. Well, people also need to look after the knees and the hips. <laughs> like I'm not saying just do shoulders. That's the most important thing in the world. Like, and we also need to breathe a certain way. And we need to like all of this stuff just, just like throws into the mix. And I, I think, um, I think it's really important for people to understand that and not to, as you say, not to get overloaded by it and not to become paralyzed by it and not to get stressed out by all this information because it's crazy. Yeah. Um, the amount that's now out there and the niches are just getting more and more um, numerous. Let's say there's more niches um, appearing as we start to understand more about the world and people starting to latch on and build a passion in, in those areas. Um, but I certainly haven't implemented everything that we've done in 200 podcasts. No, no yeah. way. Like, yeah. and I just, I just can't like the, the reality is I can't, I can't do that. Um, I'm going to throw some other ones at you just to lighten the mood oh, a little bit because that was let a me just let me, uh, so uh, Ryan from GMB was 158. I'm going to put these in the show notes for people. That was an honest conversation. Yeah, that was cool. That was very cool. Do you know, actually, one the other thing I want to say is like the thing that probably and this is a little bit selfish that I love most about the podcast is that you get to feel like you're friends with the guests afterwards a little bit. 
Um, and yeah. it's the ongoing conversations that have like carried on after that has been like, and, and literally just in like a, in a friendship way, like you could literally send Ryan a message now and he'd be like, Hey man. And like, it would just be yeah. like your mates. So I was uh, going to throw some, cool. that was about giving my next point actually, people that we're now friends with. I say friends, like it's not that we like hang oh, on. Dana Santa's got to throw that I out there. I was going to say Dana. Oh, I was going to say Dana. Dana. B-Boy Dana. Wicket is now my flair coach. B-Boy Wicket, yeah. He was good. And the other Straight one, I, I also really enjoyed it. I think he's actually one of maybe the most important listens, if we're going to go and throw something back for people to really go and have a think about, is Peter from Piper's Farm, where Ooh. our food comes from. Yeah. That is Peter an Piper. important And that isn't even... It's not, it's Peter Grieg. Uh, <laughs> it's not Peter Piper. Is it not? How can this no. Piper's farm? I've been telling everyone it's, it's Peter Piper. No. I was like, can you believe that? What a joke. <laughs> uh, SOC 5, 5% off your organic grass-fed beef and all sorts of other beautiful amazing food at piper's farms Can't but sally bell joined us on that one and we had yeah. a great just the conversation around where food comes from we are in the world is kind of so oblivious to this and yeah. this is one thing which I, it frustrates me about mainstream media we're in the middle of a petrol crisis at the moment which i'm 100 percent sure would not be as bad if it wasn't for the media like egging it up but this it also wouldn't be so bad if everyone would just act normally exactly but they're I doing it because the government Essex. But the government is telling everybody there's a problem. Or not government, sorry. The news is telling everyone there's a problem. So everyone's now panicked by it. And anyway, so I'll get stuck <laughs> into that. But like these conversations around nutrition particularly are super important. And the voices of people like Sally and Peter should be voices that we're elevating over the yeah. mass market budgets and marketing budgets of huge food producers because they are not telling you the truth um and yes it's more expensive let's just wrap this point up to buy meat from a place like piper's farm but there's a reason for it it might be more expensive to buy equipment from certain people but that's probably because there's a reason that it's been made in a certain way which respects um human rights and health and safety and that sort of stuff so i just think we've got like there is a, a social responsibility within some of this to actually listen to some of these voices and elevate those potentially higher than others that we choose to give our attention to totally totally uh, i've just found mike fitch 168 best mate um, and with, and without wanting to basically say all of them because it's going to be quite a big list for me i'll put the li i'll put these in the show notes so people can actually see them and without wanting to just add more and more to that i'm just gonna if i can have two more one on. one you'll definitely agree with um uh, the brain guy and why am i gonna yeah. forget his real name oh i feel bad now well that's why it's the brain guy if we didn't remember the brain, guy. The brain guy that's why What's you need, need to be a guy name. i've like had conversations with him scott, anyway, living scott robinson there you robinson. go the brain guy um like what a guy like straight up uh, yeah, he, he got in twice he was that good yeah knowledge and like the knowledge that guy's got plus like just a exceptionally nice man great man doing amazing things like helping people with like crazy sort of injuries to get better or improve their life so like shout out uh to him um and then the far my fighter one i can almost almost forgot when we had, um, actually, because this, this then tells a story, a little bit of a story of like uh, the process of getting a guest on and why it's also exciting for us. Read, read a book, go, oh, crikey, that was good. Um, send them a message on Instagram and see if you can get them on the podcast. Um, I did that with, uh, I've done that with a few people, but um, Patrick McKeown from the Oxford Vantage, I've got to give oh, a shout out. I, I, did, I, yeah. I, was, I knew we wouldn't get through I nearly, the podcast I nearly forgot. without I, I somehow nearly Patrick. forgot. But um, yeah, again, top man. And, um, but that was been like a little bit mind blowing for me when you've gone like, you know, you read a book and you go like, well, oh, crikey, this person's like, you know, really f either famous or I don't know. We have, the, we're, we're all just people, right? But at times you think like, and, and I look at some of the people that we've had on and go, I can't believe we got them on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, but that's the, I guess that's the, that's one of the great sides of the world, uh, the connected internet world now. It's, it's quite easy to get in contact with people. Um, so, I'm going to put wanna... something out, Jacko. If people listen to it, to this, so I, I think there is a there's an opportunity for podcasts to evolve because typically mm. this is the thing, right? Right, we get people on, we talk to them about their area of expertise, and we all and we come away thinking that this is possibly like the most important thing that we need to now think about because that person is going to be massively passionate about their subject area. Mm. Um, I I've listened to a couple of podcasts where there's someone's got a guest on or two guests on and then they've had a relatively sort of confrontational conversation. Now I think that's a bit oh, of a tricky cranky. one because 
you don't see good interviewers like properly stripping like things off people but there's a certain worlds within health and fitness and i won't name the physios specifically but it's physios where they were quite happy to like have a proper like dig at each other um, um yeah and it's like i i think it's i like the idea of getting people on with different opinions hmm. or from different perspectives but I don't want that to become an argument and I'm right, you're not. So you've got to, the, the right people need to come on who are open to kind of rethinking and, and being, um, having their opinions changed. So that's just my idea. But like, if people are listening to this and going, what would you like to see us talk about? Who would you like to have us, or have us to try and get on? So get someone on that hates calisthenics and just see how that well, conversation yeah, like, goes down. I, 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 <laughs> I'm kind of keen on that because <laughs> I, we, like, the, I just think the world of podcasts is everybody's like, it's a, it's a platform for people to kind of agree with each other, basically. And, and mm. if we get somebody on, we don't, we, it's rude to get somebody on and go, no, I disagree with what you're saying. I think it's complete codswallop. I've not said that word for a long time. Just came out. Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It would it would be a very short interview potentially if that that's how it went down. Well, th um, that, but that's an interesting one because you then go, mm. well, are people open to actually coming on and having conversations where they're willing to have their opinions changed or not even to be challenged? Like, I don't want to stand here and defend and come yeah. from a place of I've got to defend my perspective. I just want to share my perspective. Why don't you share your perspective? And then yeah. we can probably from that discourse kind of like. Learn something. I don't know. I'll, I don't know I'll, if that a work in podcast world. Yeah, but well, it might. we could be. We, we could be a frontier. Um, are we ourselves open to? That would be quite damaging if, at the end of a podcast episode, like, be like, yeah, calisthenics is crap. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, me. This is probably an offline conversation, <laughs> but this is where you sort of. Um, we probably think that we have a responsibility to be putting out information and getting guests on, which we think is going to be supporting the message that we want to put out into the world. But is that also reinforcing our own echo mm -hmm. chamber and beliefs and getting philosophical? Yeah. Um, the wider and also, we go, I, yeah. I think somebody might have done this already. I think there's a very successful either podcast or like BBC four show where there's a guy who gets two people on, like he'll get like a, a Christian and atheist on and he just kind of like, he'll sit there <laughs> and he'll like, let him go for it. Just but like, the fire. Well, just, but, but beautifully manages a conversation. It takes a bit of skill. I don't think you and I have like, we just, <laughs> could we could we do that i don't know but if anyone's got any good ideas for like what they would like the movement strength and podcast to be about between episode 200 and 300 then you should let us know yes um and i wanted to just sign off by saying from me and tim huge thank you to everyone that listens and an even bigger thank you if that's okay to all of the guests that we've had on because uh, the first nine episodes were just me and tim and um i don't i doubt that we would have got to the place we are now with 200 episodes if we didn't have any guests on and it's the, it's the amazing guests and the listeners that make this podcast what it is so thank you everyone for coming on and also listening and you know as we have been you'll be surprised at who we can get on this podcast so if you have any um although what is i've had it <laughs> some people go go on um uh i'm trying to think of who it was it was like uh you know when we say like you know send us some send us some suggestions um and uh, what did someone put on? It was something ridiculous, like Usain Bolt. It wasn't Usain Bolt. It was, some, it was like, yeah, but anyway, we've got, you know, there's only so far we can go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, we, Think, there's a league. Dream high, a, but be, be realistic. <laughs> there's like a podcast league, isn't there? If you're in a yeah. premiership, you can get yeah. like, other premiership yeah. guests on. Yeah. If you're we're like not, we're not Champions League yet. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not quite there yet. You can't quite get that leverage. Um, I'm just going to finish with one story. I don't know if we told this story at the time, but it'll make you laugh, Jack, because we, rec oh. we, we reckon, are we, um, what's the word? I can't think of it. When we look back on, on, on how the podcast unit, and obviously people will realize they listen to us and go, it's a smooth operation. The boys have got running here. They've run a tight ship. They've got professional editing and all that sort of stuff. I mean, there was a time when we got Sal from Mind Pump lined up. Now, <laughs> hey, we what... haven't said this is a good podcast, actually, to listen back to us. It was. Like that. Now, what we thought <laughs> was happening was that we were being interviewed on Mind Pump. There had been a communication breakdown between the people behind the scenes, Jacko and Mind Pump assistants. My PA, David. Your PA, David. <laughs> yeah. And the Mind Pump PA, who's not called Sal, um, had, 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 had there'd been a mis the miscommunication. <laughs> we thought we were getting on Mind Pump. We were like, this is big news, Jacko. I was like, Mind so Pump's a big podcast. Podcast. We're going to get on there. We're going to get interviewed by Sal. And then Sal thought that he was getting interviewed on our podcast. Hence why that was probably happening. But we started off and we went, right, let's record them. And it went silent. 
This was the because it was literally like we didn't have that weird awkward conversation until after it was like right yeah let's go we're like yeah cool let's go then it, so we just... we went quiet waiting for Sal to ask us the first question at the same time he was quiet waiting for <laughs> us to ask him the next first question and then that happened twice right we're like, okay guys you still there yeah yeah we're there yeah ready to go yeah go go on then <laughs> <laughs> and it stopped again and then there was like. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then we had to go, are you, we're, are you interviewing us or, or, and they were like, oh no, I thought you were interviewing us. This really <laughs> awkward thing like, on air. Like, and we, we had no questions lined up. We were like, we, we were thought we were being interviewed. So we'd not prepped anything. So then we had to like, literally we were sat there live in Jacko's well, kitchen. Then it was like, like, going like just muddling together some questions to get <laughs> through an interview. It was just like, it was like, crazy. it was then there was, it was like when you see two dogs, you, you know, see each other and it's like one of them bows down to the, 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 the bigger dog. And it was like, Sal's got a much bigger podcast uh, <laughs> we, we have. And it was like, okay, yeah, no, uh, we, we, we'll interview you then. And, yeah, uh, we recognised our position in the conference league of, champ- of uh, podcasts <laughs> compared to his premiership. And we're like, okay, yeah, we'll interview you. But we had nothing lined up, nothing prepped. And actually, people came back. I came off that podcast and went, oh, that was a car crash. Like, And then loads of people got in touch. Like, that was amazing. I love that podcast. Yeah. Just, so sometimes you show you, you do the best work when you're under the most amount of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That is, yes, well, I laughed out loud a number of times there, Timbo. Very good <laughs> story. There's probably some other stories we could tell about the podcast, but we'll save them for episode 300. Well, I'm not sure if Sal still listens or not, so he probably won't even hear this, but um, I'm I'll sure he'll remember that fun. He did, though, to be fair, off the back of that, we almost got to fly out to go and film some content with them, but we've never really kind of stuck that together. They were keen for some human flag stuff to, to mm. put out. But anyway, maybe that's a trip for another time. Right, let's sign off after that little story time. Thank you <laughs> again. I'm just going to thank everybody. And thank you to all the po- people who've, who've come on as guests. We don't pay people. That's how the podcast world works. So people genuinely, genu- generously, I meant to say, give us their time mm. and we really appreciate it. Um, and all the people we haven't mentioned as well. If we just haven't mentioned you, it doesn't mean that we don't love you and thank you for your time and expertise as well. We do. Um, and yeah, we look forward to, to hopefully scaling the scaling ourselves up the leagues to continue to get great guests on for your listening pleasure yeah, so thank you all for listening and uh, if you haven't given us a review yet within 200 episodes and you've been listening to a lot of them then we would massively appreciate a review on itunes spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast it just helps with the ratings and other people find the podcast too so we'd appreciate that thank you very very much until next time keep exploring your physical potential through movement strength and play. Class dismissed.